What is going on, folks? This is the Dad Bod Golf Pod. Welcome to episode 203. It is Ben and Nate coming at you live from St. Andrews. If you <laughs> we watched live from St. Andrews this <laughs> evening before recording this episode. Yes, we did. Kyle is on Daddy Duty's night. He has left us with the reins, which as always is a poor decision on his part. That is not the truth. Kyle is embarrassed because of his stupid decisions he's made. We'll get into that later in the pod. No, more on that later. <laughs> <laughs> it always works out to where Kyle uh puts himself in horrible predicaments in the next episode he can't record so me and ben will do our due diligence as friends and pod yes. mates and will absolutely torch his reputation across the board ben yes bet online yes the best place for any type of betting any type of better if you're the guy who likes to go at 10 p.m like yourself to the casino or if you're more of a 5 a.m can't sleep you want to slap the turkish soccer button <laughs> Both of those are available to you. Bet online. Type in the code B B L E A V fifty. Get a fifty percent bonus. Math. Math. Bet online where the game starts. Ben, take us through round one. I will tell you what. Cameron Young started out at like, oh gosh, he was like plus something like 2,500 and he's just because of his lead that he threw out there today, it dropped to like plus 700. You got to slap the live bet on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Still available. I mean, he is leading the tournament. That's the big surprise. Uh, Wake Forest guy. And he went out and he just demolished the course. And it, it, it was Nate, you and I talked about it, it, it before we got on here. If you teed off early or if you teed off late, you had a distinct advantage because the winds were less than five miles per hour. If you teed off midday, all those guys are like anywhere from minus two to plus whatever, just because yep. they did not do well. So, um, you know, if you, as I said, you, you're one of the early guys, which that score was posted way early. He was one of the first groups out, which by the way, okay, let me go on a tangent about Paramount. You guys uh -huh. completely suck because you pushed this thing out that people needed to subscribe to you in order to watch the open championship slash British open. I have to put that in there because Kyle's big on open championship, even though he says he's proper. Hey, you know what? Tonight, Ben, call what the hell you want. It's the British open. So they put it out there that coverage begin at midnight because Nate sends a text last night. I wake up to that this morning because I go to bed pretty, pretty early and he's like, it's got to be cool if you're on the West coast, you can start watching at 1030 and stay up all night. And when yeah. I saw that, I was like, no, you can't, but they're not teeing off that early. And sure enough, I looked, Paramount started coverage that friggin' early, but the first guy didn't tee off to like 2.30 a.m. So you would have just been paying a subscription to watch, hey, here's what's coming up in the open. A subscription to watch Paul Laurie hit range balls. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me right now? I'd be so pissed if I hit that subscribe button on Paramount, had that money come out of my account, and I'd have tuned over and been like, what the hell is this? Hey, but for real, let's get Sam Torrance to commentate everything ever. Yes. The next time I take a leak in the middle of the night, I would like Sam Torrance there in my bathroom just walking me through it. I want hey. – I, I want – I think that those those the the British guys, the Scottish guys, the Irish guys need to be used more in the commentary. And the only reason not being, just in the British Open, not just in the British Open. I, I'm just I'm telling you that, it, it, and 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 I know people go, yeah, but Faldo Faldo's a pansy. We've already established that. Boo Weekly put that out there. Not us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boo Weekly put that out there. I completely agree with him. Of course, he has turned in his resignation. He's going to be retiring. But I, for some reason, when those guys that grew up around those courses start talking about that, as well as comparing it to American course, because that was their dream to play in America, right. to play on American court, it just, for some reason, it just means more than the hoity-toity <laughs> Chamblees of the world. And, you know, it, 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 not that I don't like those guys. I do like Chamblee. I, I like his takes because he will say stuff that a lot of other people won't say. And but I'll say this, I just for some reason, I like getting that different point of view from the guys across the pond that have decided, hey, this is what we think. And it's like, 
you know what? I never thought about it that way. They just seem more artful. The some of the yeah. British guys just seem more artful. Like like it's a it's a an honor and a pleasure it is. to be calling that golf. Quick note about Paul Laurie. Also, you mentioned Boo Weekly. So Boo Weekly and Paul Laurie got paired together at some point in 2008 or 2009. The first time Boo Weekly went over there, the comment about they ain't got no fried chicken, they ain't got no sweet tea. <laughs> yeah. And Boo, <laughs> Boo Weekly looks over at Paul Laurie and he's like, so how would you qualify for this? <laughs> I remember that. I remember that story. Yes, I remember that. That's awesome. That is yeah. awesome. Uh, well, Lori almost dunked one on 18 today with his driver. I don't know if you saw that highlight, but hit one to about three feet on no, 18 off the one. tee box. Um, yeah. Rory hit a friggin' two iron on 18 and drove the green. Yeah. Like that's and how Paul hard. Lori had driver. So, you know, they're. Yeah. That's how hard the, the grounds are right now. I love it. I, I think that they will make the course where you won't see the six and seven unders tomorrow. I think mm. you'll see. It'll come back a little bit. Uh, and the only reason being is just because RNA has said we can't really do anything. We can they can speed the greens up, number one. They can always they were do slow that. today. Uh, yeah, they Very said slow. that they said day one was going to be right around a 10 or even a nine. So they can speed them up if they want. So that can happen. Uh, they can't, they don't have the irrigation system like Augusta National does, so they can't start sucking water suck out. The water out of them. Uh, and even it's so dry out there, apparently, that they can't water the fairways because it will just end up in puddles and they don't want to do that. So, good gracious, we're, we're stuck with the dry fairways. That's just going to happen. You guys can go ahead and get used to that. However, they can adjust the greens so the greens can get firmer and they can get quicker. And they've also, the RNA has said that they are going to adjust some of the pin placements. Like it'll still be in that vicinity because they get a pin place or a pin sheet whenever they check in that says where they are going to be each day. However, that's just a quadrant they're going to be in each day. So expect some of these pins to be a little closer to the edge, uh, closer to some probably hills and some, some undulations that, you know, guys can't just lag it up there and tap in for par. They're going to make them work for it. And you see the the biggest difference, I feel like, in the fairways of a place like St. Andrews and the American courses that we're used to. On number five, Max Homa, uh, Fitzpatrick, and Tiger, I feel like they all hit very similar drives. And this is where the, the Sam Torrances of the world come in and give you some good insight. But one of them hits into a bump a little bit, and it stops right there. And one of them hits on the downslope of the bump. They land five yards apart, and they end up 70 yards apart. Yep. So now all of a sudden, Max Holmes got 198 in. He hit the same shot, landed five yards away from Tiger, and Tiger's got 242. Yep. So entirely different ballgame. I and mean, you cannot – that doesn't. There, there's no skill involved in that. You can't pick where to land your driver 270 yards down the fairway in a, you know, a three-yard vicinity. So a lot of uh, – that's those are the things – and I don't want to get too into this yet, but those are the things that Kyle just doesn't – he doesn't compute that when he, you know, makes no. these outrageous claims. No, because I said – I was telling a buddy of mine at work about that. He was asking about it, and I said, well, the, the difference is – I said, St. Andrews is a little bit different, but whatever course it was, I forgot which one Tiger won on one of his other Open Championships that he won. It, it, he didn't hit a bunker all – like all four rounds. He yeah. stayed out of everybody. And, he's, and he said afterwards, they asked him about it. They said, what was your goal coming into this week? And he said, not to three-putt and did not hit in a bunker and he didn't do either. And he ended up winning the open championship at that time. So um, it's the same with this. Like you just have to avoid the bad shit. Like that's the, that's which the it's thing. avoidable. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it's why, and especially when there's no win, if, if all of a sudden Saturday rolls around and <clears throat> it's still calling for winds less than 15 miles an hour, if winds kick up to 30, 40 miles an hour, though it, we're going to see carnage over the weekend. No doubt. Because the greens are going to firm up. They're going to shave them a little bit closer, so they'll be quicker each and every day. And if the winds pick up on the weekend, all these six, seven, eight unders are going to start coming right back down to the field. Yep. You'll be you, – and it'll be like the U.S. Open. You'll be grinding for pars. Yeah, you will just be absolutely 73 is going to be the, the low score of the day if the wind gets up there. I mentioned and Tiger. Tiger, terrible start. Bad. <laughs> I don't – the whole in a divot thing, if you're – if you've won 15 majors and your ball ends in a divot from 115, you've got to be able to not chunk it. I mean, it barely made it to the burn. That's the thing is 
they 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 said, well, it's bad luck you hitting a divot. And I'm thinking pins on the front. The green is like 70 yards deep. Yep. Has 115 club, club player up, 125 bub. shot. Yeah. Yes. Like, what are you doing? Like, the, the one thing you can't do is be short. Rom almost did it. Rom almost did the same thing. And they talk about how tight those lives are. So, I mean, I get it. He's in a he's in a divot. He's also on a, a dry, tight fairway. But like that doesn't you did it, it doesn't it doesn't it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter. I'm not saying that you should still be able to stick it to ten feet like you would without it being a divot. But you should have a twenty footer for birdie behind the hole all day. No, all day anybody Brooke, in that field should be able to do that. Brooks Kepka said it best when they ask him about his take when he goes into majors, and he said, "Well, I take each major differently because they all play differently." He and he used this, and I think that that's what the that's what guys guys get greedy because they need to do what Brooks said that he did. Not that I'm saying that Brooks is like the golf god, but he said on the U.S. Open, major champion. yeah, he did, yeah, exactly. Uh, he said when it comes to the U.S. Open, every hole he plays, center of the green is all he's looking at doing mm-hmm. until he gets specific <laughs> lies and specific hole placements that he thinks he can get after it. He's like all patience. He's like, if I can just stay around par and take advantage of short par fours, short par fives, short par threes, and then throw it at the stick, that's one thing. But other than that, and I think on the conditions today, that's what Tiger, when he talked about he's been out of competition golf, I think that's what affected him. Like he should have looked at that hole on one and been like, crap, I'm in a divot, center of the green. That's all I need. Par. Yep. Take your par, move on to number two. And so I kind of wonder, uh, it's going to be tough for him to make the cut because uh, I think that cut line, Kyle, did, I will say Kyle's probably right on that. That cut line is probably going to hover around even one, two under. Uh, it's going to be tough for Tiger to waltz out there tomorrow and shoot six, seven under. And so yeah. um, he's probably not going to make the cut because he ended up having a bad day today. His putting wasn't great, which again, competition golf. It's one thing to practice putting over and over and over. It's different when you get in the heat of the moment. He had a bad day, and I hate it for him because that was our thing is people were like, he's he's got a chance to possibly win. I'm like, he does not have a chance to win, okay? We're just trying to get this guy through the cut, and I don't know that he's going to make that now. We just want to watch him play on the weekend. We just we want to sit in our boxers on Saturday morning and watch Tiger Tee up. Probably the first group out, but we just want to see it. Yeah, and, and, and good for – good for St. Andrews as well as the fans over there that are kind of trying to push him through. He has said he doesn't know with his leg, this may be his last time playing. Uh, They're playing again there five years from now. They want him back. They've already said, uh, you need to get healthy because we want you back. Like that can be your last time out. Five years from now can be your last time out. And they're going to get there. He's going to get the invite. He's just got to stay healthy in order to do it. But can he stay healthy and also maintain any sort of competitive edge, like like playing enough in the next five years to to not just completely embarrass himself, not Calvecchia? It. Man, well, well, I, the first person I thought of was David Duvall. I mean, he went from just his back issues, yeah, and you know, Freddie Couples kind of overcame his back issues, but he's still dealing with them on the senior events. But, um. <sighs> You know, David Duvall was right there with Tiger. It was the Tiger Duvall that was supposed to be the rivalry that you and I were going to be able to grow up and watch. And injuries plagued him, and he looks like crap now, man. I mean, he's played in senior events. He's played in this event. He's played in some other invited events, and he just can't do it anymore. And I think Tiger's on his way there. That was a thing that got posted on Twitter earlier today. Do you think – I think it was like golf.com or golf RX or something. Is there any chance Tiger wins another major? After what I saw today, because, Nate, this is the easiest course for him to play. It's short. It's flat. Yep. I don't see – if, if this is what he's going to – if this is the performance we're going to see, no, he's not winning another. It's the least physically demanding course that they play literally all year. Like, yep. I don't care, major or non-major. It's the not The weather is not – It's not The weather's not punishing. Yep. No. 65 today, 65 and a walk in the park, like you know, flat ground. The 65 is where you never sweat. You never feel cold and you never sweat. And he shot six over. I mean, it's just, I, we got so 
not duped, but the, I don't know what he did at the Masters, just pure adrenaline. Like, he, he played good. Like, he, I mean, he made the cut. He, you know, it wasn't contention per se, but he's like, hey, look, we gave this guy a couple more months of rehabbing. I mean, he's probably going to win the other three majors of the year. Yeah. Well, we saw what happened, and he just – he was in such bad shape before this wreck, such bad physical shape, like the amount of effort it took just to tee it up for four rounds in a row. And we just, we said to we're blue in the face and nobody wants to admit it, but like it's it, the, the, the window is closed. Yeah. I, I, the, unless you want to do some Tom Watson when you're 60 and go down the line with Stuart sink. It's just now this is now the British open is where that can happen. Right. Yeah. British open is the only place where a Tom Watson is going to show up at 60 years old and go to a playoff with Stuart sink. But it's, I don't think that's in Tigers. I just don't think that's in his his realm. And see, we talked about that today. Uh, a, a guy from work that was talking to me about it, and I said, because he mentioned the Watson thing, and I said, you know, that's fine. But he still, he had like a four shot lead heading into the final day. Yeah, and fatigue what? got him. Fatigue got him on the final day on a flat course on yeah. a place that you can hit a five iron. 250 yards because you can just hit it down the fairway and let it run out and even at 60 those guys can do that and it still got him so tiger's going to run into that because here's what if tiger can't play a course like this u.s open he'll he'll still be able to play augusta just because augusta has its moments that you can he knows his way around the course he knows it like the back of his hand he'll do fine at tory but other than that these other courses that they've lengthened out i mean yes he still can get off the tee at 290 and everybody's like he gets off at 290 i'm like yeah there's other guys getting off at 330 like yeah. i don't know what to tell you beth page would kick his ass yes there's no uh, chance he does worth a damn at beth page yeah i'm trying to think of where else they play um what's the uh the church pew bunkers uh oakmont yes oakmont which i mean it just these he's just getting left in the dust and it's, so it's it's age it's health. Um, I mean, just to relate it personally, we're coming up on like the one year anniversary of when you started doing the pod because I had an appendectomy and was out. Mm -hmm. I'm not hitting the ball the same that I was two years ago because of my age and not recovering from that. This guy got his leg almost amputated. Like, after I, having a broke having a broken body before he even got in the Genesis that morning. Right. Like body was broken before he even stepped foot in the car. And see, before I had my appendectomy, this was primo, baby. This was this was quality <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Speaking of primo this was, sexy. This was, this was sex shit. walking. This was sex walking. Now on the T sex icon, Benjamin Taylor. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of sex icons. Head on over to swannies.co. Mm -hmm. Listen, folks, this new age of golf apparel, which is taking over the nation, Ben's a part of it. Kyle's a part of it. I'm a part of it. It's no longer stripes and some argyle, folks. We have got absolutely 100% great content coming from the Swannies guys. Head to toe, great hats, polos, pants, shorts, you name it. They got it. What is our coupon code on that one, Benjamin? Uh, Dad bod golf pod dash 25. Dash 25. Gives you 25% off. It's already very reasonably priced. Give 25% off for that little sweetening of the deal. Check out the shirts. It's the kind of stuff that you order, and you cannot wait for it to get to the door. Lock and load, swannies.co, where fashion and sexual icons start. Ben, if you now? have a – what's that? Where to now? Kyle's dumb takes? Uh, I was just going to run through the leaderboard just a second, just to call out if you want to pull up the leaderboard uh, yep. real quick. Uh, Rory, a real quick question for you over under even par tomorrow for Rory because we just we, we've seen it a thousand times. Will we be duped again by Rory? No, I think he does fine tomorrow. I think it's always his Saturday round or his Sunday round where he blows it. I think it's a weekend where we get delusions of thinking that everything's going to be great and then so he's he, he tees off Saturday in the last I five think groups. he. I think he te yeah, I think he's in one of the one of the last five groups on Saturday. Um, and then I think Saturday he lays I think he lays an egg on Saturday. Uh, they call Saturday moving day, I think, for Rory McElroy. I think he moves down the leaderboard on Saturday. Takes the U-Haul right on down to 40th place. <laughs> Cam Smith, my boy. Yes. Got the good draw, which I hate saying that. I hate the good draw, but it is what it is. 
uh, five under, uh, and then uh, a couple of whatever the hell you catch in the Northern Sea with some uh, spinner bait. <laughs> I kind of wonder what he is fishing for up there. Uh, trout or maybe some carpy or <laughs> Get, yeah. some Alaskan crab. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting the big king crab. To, um, um, Thigala impressed me. Excited about him. Thigala had the best walk-in putt known to man today. How about I, the – I don't know if you saw that highlight, but he thought he had missed it from about 25 feet out, so he starts walking about halfway there. It ends up falling, and even the commentators were like, did he walk that in because he thought it was in, or did he walk that in because he thought he'd missed? And Justin Leonard chimed in, and Justin Leonard was like, oh, no, he thought he putted it off the green. Yeah. <laughs> And he's a passionate guy. Thigala is a, a yeah. emotions on the sleeve kind of guy. Barkley Brown, uh, real quick before we move on to um, Kyle being a doofus. Yeah. Barkley Brown, cool, calm, and collected to a four under round, five birdies and a bogey. Uh, looked like he was playing a little two and two at the local Muni. Does he wake up tomorrow and think, or today, since we're recording this, does he wake up and think, oh crap, I'm on the front page of the leaderboard and I shit my pants? He played early today, which means he has to hang out for a long time yep. tomorrow before he tees off. 14 uh, hours of golf today, by the way. That's, 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 that's brilliant. That's amazing. <laughs> I like Barkley Brown to uh, shoot one or two over, make the cut, and really just fade into oblivion and finish 50th. But hey, I'll never prove me wrong. He'll be, the, he'll be the high amateur, so, you know, our low amateur, I guess I should say. Speaking of proving people wrong, let me just say something about Kyle real quick before we wrap up this episode. He takes these, I could break X score on X course, and he he puts it into this uh, vacuum. And he takes out every single other factor. He looks at a a set of numbers on a scorecard, and he looks at the distance. And and that's pretty much all he looks at. It's a short course, and, uh, and there's no water. Because Kyle, and you know why he says that? Because Kyle sprays it all over the place. So he, he, does. he finds a place where he can find it, which, by the way, that fescue is no joke for somebody. Not like just Kyle. fescue. He doesn't understand that course has out of bounds and he's going to go out at least twice. Yes. And this whole, like, he texts this day saying, like, hey, I can drop out of the bunker and uh, get a one stroke penalty. Okay. That's a bogey if you don't get it up and down the bunker, maybe a double. This is not a joke, dude. Sepp Straka, a PJ Tour winner, shot 81 today. That, this is. And the wind picked up in the middle of the day and then dropped down. That's St. Andrews. We can't yeah. take one weather report and be like, what's going to be five mile an hour winds? Look, go ask, go ask all those guys. Go ask Tiger Dadgum Woods how he felt about a six handicap breaking eight today. He did not give me permission to use his name, so I won't use it. But talking to a tour pro, DMing. Really? Yep. DMing a tour pro. He says Kyle doesn't break, break 100. Whoa. <laughs> I feel slightly bad about giving him no uh, leg to stand on here to defend himself, and we will allow him the, the chance to defend himself come Monday. But, uh, yeah. But what, what, what's the wind? What, what, do we, did we give a, a wind situation? Uh, no, it, it, that was, that was without, I explained that to the pro when I was DMing him, I was like, all right, so low winds, everything. And he goes, no, I'm telling you, playing it down, rolling it out with same conditions as the pros are playing with too. Like have people standing there, have people watching that kind of thing does not break a hundred. Has Kyle, I mean, uh, has this, this anonymous pro played St. Andrews? Yes. Okay. I was going to say, you I mean, you got to have some, you got, I mean, you can't just come up with that. Yep. Just out of the blue. He said, throw the yardage out the door, throw all that stuff out, throw the wide openness out the door. It is completely different. It and is different. All the different sight golf. lines, yes. all the blind shots, the tight all lies. the bunkers that you do get in, the he said, tight lies. He was talking what, about if you many... hit a, what if you hit it thin and you have a 150-foot putt? You can four putt. Yeah. It might be a good four putt. <laughs> so it, it's, it's one of those – he said, and I said, well – because that was my – I even actually defended Kyle. I think he breaks 100. I mean, Kyle hits it far enough on a on a 6,800-yard course. He's going to be close enough where he can pitch and putt it around to shoot 95. I mean, that, I think he breaks 100. I think he um, can break 100. I might even think he could break 90. But breaking 80 means it, it straight up, like yeah. putting everything out. 
you gotta you gotta more you gotta play your ass off pretty much everywhere to break he's, eighty legitimately. He has got delusions of grandeur. We can talk about him because not because he's not here. We talked about him. That's the thing people worry about us. Listen, we tell it to his face like we tell it to his back. All right, we. It's true. Yeah, he is, this is, I would say all this to his face. I would actually be meaner yes, if he was it, here. Yeah, we would be a whole lot meaner. So uh, I will say this: one thing that he can do to help him out is he can grab his blue tees. Uh, I we I want to thank uh, Denver who listens to us. Uh, Denver grabbed him a blue tee and, and he grabbed him a speaker and he used the dad bod discount code and he was able to be able to use that and and secure his blue tees. I got pink. Uh, and, and you should go ahead and get, there it is right there. Part of it. That's part of the, uh, that's, that's the, Oh, that's, the, that's the allure cleaner. right there. That's, that's the, the hook. That's, that's the cleaner. The hook. That's the cleaner. That's the three max baby three max. Go ahead and grab that blue tees today. And, uh, and, and, and you will not regret it. Cause even though Nate doesn't like slope, trust me, you're going to need it. Except if you're playing St. Andrews, cause they don't have anything that's up and down. Every Turn time. it off. Hey, yep. but you know what you might have to do at St. Andrews? You may have to pull that puppy out for a putt. Yeah. You know, imagine, imagine, but Hey, could you, like you're putting like, Hey, can you shoot that for me real quick? <laughs> I don't know the stat and I'm going to say this real quick. So this is ignorance that's talking. I want to say that they said it was either like five or seven greens that are over a hundred yards wide. I, I don't I, I don't think that's an outlandish statement. I mean, that's, I'm pretty sure didn't Matt somebody chipped off the green today. Someone had like a 150 foot putt and chipped it. Just, that's insane that I could be on the other side of the green and I have to take a full lob wedge just to get to the other side of the green. Just a little just a little pitch and putt, you know. Got up and down <laughs> from a two putt, an up and down two putt. <laughs> Wow. So, uh, hey, we got to get out of here because I didn't upgrade. We didn't sign under uh, Kyle's uh, thing. We signed, we signed up under mine, and I'm cheap, and Nate's cheap, and Kyle apparently is filthy rich because he's not hanging out with us tonight. But that's cool. Uh, but we do want to thank Blue Tees and Swannies, and we also want to thank BetOnline.ag and all the money that Kyle leaves us from time to time. And he also owes us a six-pack of beer apiece, which is awesome. So, Dad Bod Golf Pod. Always!